Hello and welcome. We are crazy about gingerbread. And so we're going to make this cute flag today. I don't see a sewing machine. How are we going to be doing this? It is all done by hand. We're going to do hand applique today. All the stitches and putting all the pieces on is done by hand. Yes, you can do it by machine, but I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. Plus, I'm going to show you a new technique. I've been asked to show how to do freezer paper applique. It is something that I don't normally do, but I was like, why not give it a try? So we're going to use freezer paper to make our design. You're probably wondering, who is this crazy lady? Hello and welcome. I'm Jackie with Jackie Russell Creates, where we talk about everything quilting, sewing, and embroidery. I give tips, tricks, and techniques so you can conquer that next quilting project, whether it is small or a full-size quilt. So let's get started on making this gingerbread flag. All you're going to need is some wool, felted wool, some freezer paper, and some DMC floss to match the colors of your wool. Now let's get started. With my mic here, but we'll work around it. So you need to cut your fabric at 10 inches wide, however long you want it to be. I'm making a flag, so it isn't very tall. To do the scallop at the bottom, you need to trace it onto the doll side of the freezer paper, and I folded it in half so my scallops are the same. Then you're going to press it onto your fabric with the shiny side down. That's going to let it stick temporarily to your fabric. And then you're going to trim around the scallops and then you can just pull off your freezer paper. Now the nice thing about using freezer paper is that you can save those templates and put them and use them again. we're going to take some dark brown and we're going to trace our house pattern onto it. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to iron it down, put the shiny side down onto our fabric. I am using wool or felted wool. And then you're going to cut it out. And then we're also going to do the same thing with our snow that goes across the top of the house, along the bottom of the house, and two red candy canes. Now the candy canes you will have to flip over when you do the second one so that they're mirrored images. <laughs> is up from the point of the middle scallop. So I just lined up that point and the point of my gingerbread house and made the bottom of it at the three and a half inch mark. And then I'm going to use straight pins and pin it down. That is just to keep it in place as I do the rest of the other pieces that go on first before we tack this house down. Uh, 
Okay, so now we took, we have the house pinned down. It is not tacked down. It is just pinned. Then we took our pattern C, which is just some snow. And it has a little flap on it, and you're going to tuck that underneath your house. And then you're going to take your candy cane. It has one pattern. So you take it, you iron and you trace it onto there. Then you reverse it. So you have the candy canes of two different sides. Now we're going to do a whip stitch. So we're going to tie a knot in our thread. We're using just some floss, DMC floss. You're using two strands. And I like to wrap my finger, the thread around just my finger. I'm holding the tail between my thumb. And then I'm going to wrap it around my needle twice. Hold it with my middle finger and just pull up the needle. And it's going to make a small knot. Now we're going to tack down the white. So our candy canes are underneath our white fabric. So we're going, when we whip stitch, we're going to go on top of the candy cane and go through all the layers. So to whip stitch, you're going to bring your needle up near the edge of your fabric that you're going to tack down. Then you're going to go onto it, just straight down. And then you're going to come up just a little bit. Over. And back down. You're just, caught, just doing a straight little line. So what I like to do is come up. And then when I go down, I'm going to go down and then just bring my needle over and do it in one stitch. So you're just pretty much whipping and tacking it down. So we're going to hold our candy, our white fabric on top of our candy cane because it is overlapped. You're going to come down then you're going to come up onto your candy cane fabric right beside your snow and that's going to tack your snow down onto your candy cane and you're going to continue this all the way around to your snow is tacked down we are not tacking the house down it is just pinned at the moment to hold its position while we put everything else on because we have some more things to tuck underneath it. So this is a collaboration. I am hosting it along with Terry from the Robin's Nest and Melissa from Buckeye's Brief Decor and Lifestyle. Their link will be in the description below. As long as well as a playlist to all the other creators that are making some type of gingerbread themed DIY. It could be cooking, it could be a DIY project, it can be painting. So be sure to check that out. You never know, you may be able to find something that you enjoy. So I'm going to continue around this white fabric, or the white, and then we'll add on the rest. Now that we have those stitched on, we're going to take, and we got to get our roof piece, which is F. So we're going to iron that on to... So all I did was take, traced it on my pattern onto the freezer paper, the flat side. I have to reverse it 
when you're using freezer paper. When you're using heat and bond or any fusible, you have to flip your design. Plus, with freezer paper, you're going to save these little templates that you made, and you can make them, use them over and over again. And I'll show you how to do that later on. <clears throat> so, we have F, so we're just going to cut him out. G, and we're also going to need E. So, E is the snow for the top of our roof. Now, if you like to have it where you're like me and you, it's stuck down, you don't have to worry about it moving, then I would recommend the heme bond. But I was like, I had someone ask me how to do this. So I was like, okay, I will suck it up <laughs> for Z and teach this technique. So we have G cut out and I just take and put my templates in a bag. What I find hard -er about the freezer paper is it don't stick down as good as the heat and bond and so you have to be really careful that it don't move as you, you know as much as when you're cutting and stuff. Yes, I understand. I guess that's what makes it more unique. But you have, to me, you have less control. That is just my personal preference. Some people may like using the freezer paper design. So we have these ones cut out. We're going to lay E on top of our house to see if we need to do Okay, so we can actually tack down our house now before we add these other pieces. The F goes just like that. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to attach our house down and secure it, and then we will add on the rest. We're going to do it with the same whip stitch as we did the snow on the bottom and the candy canes. Now, because this does overlap the snow here, you're going to come through the snow and whip the house down onto the snow and the green background. And I like to start at one side. I just kind of work my way around. So I'm actually going to start up here at the corner. Make sure my house is nice and flat. And then tack it down. Let me do a few stitches and I'll show you what the, my back looks like. You can put this on a stretcher if you want. I just find it easier because you're putting all these pieces to just be able to hold it with my hand. Now you could also, if you have, not for sure if this is digital or not, but if you have a cutter, you like a Cricut or a Silhouette that I know of, you can be able to cut these out on that and so you don't have to actually cut them by hand which would make it nice okay so I've done a few stitches here so this is what the back looks like you're just gonna have a little tax little stitch all the way around the design okay so now we're gonna glue on the house or the snow on the house and our chimney. So I got a glue stick and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue 
on the points. And set it on there. Making sure to cover up my edges. I'm going to do the same thing with the chimney. And I'm going to tuck the chimney underneath the snow. And then I'm going to take the snow for the chimney and put some glue on it as well. And lay it on there. Then I'm going to take the iron and kind of dry that glue. So it'll tack it down and hold it in place for a little bit as I stitch these down. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the whip stitch all the way around the snow and the chimney. And I wanted to show you in the back. So when I get done with the piece, I just tack take the needle and run it through a couple stitches on along the back and that helps secure it down into place. You could also use this glue technique on cotton and use it on your sewing machine and it does not gunk up your needle and machine. So your DMC floss comes in six strands And you want to separate it into two. I have a video where I show how to do that. I'll link it in the description. So for the snow on the house, we're going to go all the way around it. For snow on the chimney, we're going all the way around. And the chimney, we're just going to go down the sides, the two little sides. So I'm going to start with the small chimney, or the small snow on the chimney. And I'm just coming up near the edge. We're just going to whip stitch like we've done all the other things so far. So we have those ironed down or tacked down, stitched down. Now we're going to do H, which is the door. So now we're going to center our door down. And I'm going to start in the middle of the snow on the bottom to make sure I tack down that door first. And I'm going through all the layers. So you have the door, you have the house, and the snow. So if you have a favorite place to get some wool, felted wool, please comment in the comments below and let me know because I have some other projects that I'd like and I'd like to find, you know, all kinds of different color wool. I know I can go get felt at the box stores, but I don't want felt. I actually want felted wool or wool product. Plus, you never know who else may be looking for it and can't seem to find it in their local area as well. We always like to help out our community as much as we possibly can. So to finish off a thread, I'm just going to weave it in some of the threads that I used to tack down and that will just help secure it in place. Okay so now we cut our heart out of red and we're going to cut, we have to have two to start with of 
the holly leaf. And so what I did is I just folded this so then I can get two at a time. And, or you can just cut one, move your template to another spot, and iron again. And so I have the two, but we are going to need more, so I'll show you. So I just peeled it off. We'll just put it in a different spot on our fabric and press it down. That's what's nice about... The wax paper method is you can keep using the templates over and over. So we're going to just tuck our holly leaves underneath our heart. And then we're just going to stitch around the heart. We're not going to stitch on the leaves. So let's glue those down. And I'm just putting glue on this branchy part that's going underneath the heart because we want the rest to be loose of the hollies. We're going to press them down and dry that glue. And then we're going to do our normal whip stitch around the, just the heart. Okay, you're going to come up near the heart and just make a stitch and pull it kind of tight. And then just keep, you're going to leave a space from where you had that stitch to this stitch where you come up and kind of pull it tight and then you can see where it kind of gives the leaf some dimension by pulling it a little tight Okay, so I went ahead and stitched on some peppermint sticks with the whip stitch and then some circles at the top with the whip stitch. Now we're going to add the center pieces to those candies. And we're using pattern R and we're doing it in the white or this off-white, whatever you're using for your snow, I guess. And we're going to kind of just tack it down like we did the leaves. We're just going to use a straight stitch. You're going to make another one of these peppermint candies up here at the peak of our house. It's going to have a red background. Where these ones down here are yellow and it will have this white swirl to make the peppermint candy and you'll do it the exact same way you'll just maybe you'll change up the center color that we're going to put on So you're just going to lay that on top of your yellow. Get rid of some of these stragglies here. And you're going to take the same color that you used down here on your peppermint stick. 
and you're going to use one strand and you're going to make two lines in each of the little off swirls. They don't have to be very big. You're not going up into the center. Just two little marks like that. And then you're going to come over to the next one. And you're just coming up and going down, making a little stitch. Two on each one, parallel. And then we are going to take a red M and we're going to put that in the center. of the swirl and then we're going to take our needle with the white thread one strand and we're going to do just like we did on the heart and so hopefully you'll be able to see this better you're going to come up the center And I'm going over to th three, if you're thinking of a clock, come back up the center and go close to that one, leaving a little space. Come up the center, go down at six. Come up at the center, go down close to six, leaving a little space. Come up at center, go at nine. Come up at the center, back at nine, leaving a space, and then a center, and at 12. And there is our candy swirl. So I'm going to do this one over here, just like this. And then up here, we're going to do red, where the yellow is, a white, and then your same color that you used on your heart in the center, up at the peak of our house. Okay, here's a different angle of doing the peppermint candy. So I just whip stitched the red on, and now we're going to just straight stitch the white on. Two lines in each little curve. Straight lines. So now that's the only thing that's going to be holding down the little tabs of this peppermint. The white part. And I'm using the red one strand to tack it down because I have the red background fabric here.
to green bluish color. So we're going to put that right in the center of the white. We're going to come up the center of the circle. Go down to 12, 3, 6, and 9. You're going to go once, come back up the center, and go again in that same direction. Come up the center. You're always going to come up the center and go down to the next. And you're going to do two in each direction. And that's going to tack that center piece down. And that's how you make the peppermint candy swirls. Okay, so next we're going to take Q. And you need it in like six colors to go on the little scallopy points on the roof. And we're going to do the swirl stitch again. You're going to use one strand of thread. Let's see, maybe if I do it on this one, we can see it. You're going to come up the center. Actually, you're going to come up the side. I'm going to go at 12. And then you're going to go down the center. You're going to come up close, but not exactly on the same line. Go down at the center. So you have a little, little space in there. Then you're going to come up over to three, go down the center. Come close to it. And go down. Then you're going to come up at like six. And go down. Come up by it and down, and then you're going to come up at nine and go down the center and come up again at nine. And you're going to do that on all of those little dots, circles that are on the roof. Okay, here's another view. So we're going to come up at 12. We're making the peppermint swirls. You're going to go as close as the center as you can. Come back up near that stitch, but not right on top. Back down the center. Go over to three. In the center. Next to that. Center. Down. Six. And there you go.
with sugar may in the way here. So I took three smaller circles and did the peppermint swirl on them to tack them down. Now we're going to take our white one strand and we're going to come to our peppermint sticks and we're going to do two stitches across roughly in the same area and then you're going to come up about a quarter of an inch and do some two more so you're going to space these about a quarter of an inch apart all the way up on the stick I'm just eyeballing it nothing precise So what is your favorite treat to put on a gingerbread house? We like to use gumdrops and M&Ms. Those are our kids' favorite. So we're going to do the same thing on the candy canes, except for you're going to do four lines instead of the two. I'm going to do one more set of lines right up here near the top. Isn't he just looking so adorable? And we're almost finished creating our flag, I guess what you'd call it, for the holidays. Okay, now we got to get Sugar May to move so we can finish. Come on, move, baby girl. So, <laughs> move your booty. So, I went ahead and attached some holly leaves and berries along the scallops at the bottom and the candy kings. We did the leaves just like we did these leaves, just a running stitch down the center to attach them down. And the berries are the same as we've done on all the other circles. And so now we're going to do the smoke coming out of the chimney and give the chimney a little detail and some detail on the, the little door. So we have two strands of white and all I did was take a friction pen and I just kind of roughly drew lightly a line that I can kind of follow and it just comes up and makes a little swirl and comes out makes a little swirl. And we're going to do the running stitch, the same thing that we did on our leaves. We're going to come up and we're going to make a little stitch, skip a few threads, come back up, and you can just keep going like through your material. Do you get enough stitches or you're coming to your curve? And you'll get several stitches at one time. Sugar me, move your tush. So I'm just going to follow my curve around. Then we're making three little smoke things come out of our chimney. One on each side and then one up the middle. I will post a close-up picture of the swirl so you can see. What they kind of look like. And so now I'm at the end. And so I'm going to make a little star here. So for a star, we're going to come up at A and go down at B, come up at C, 
go down at D, come up at E. You're pretty much just making an X and a plus sign on top of each other. And there's our little, little star. So I'll do three or two more of those. I'll show it a different angle. But we're going to make a little dimension on our roof, or our chimney. We're just going to make a backwards L. I'm just going to give a little dimension is all we're doing here. Sugar. And then <laughs> down by the house, we're just going to make a straight line. And then down on the left side of the door, underneath these holly berries, or hollies, leaf, we're going to make just two straight stitches one on top of each other just parallel little stitches and then we're going to go to the other side and right above the snow and that holly we're going to do another snowflake so we're going to make a plus sign And then we're going to put an X on top of that. Just to give it a look like it's snowing. And then we're going to do one right off of the door, right by the holly leaf. We're just going to make an X and a plus. You can make more of the little snowflakes if you want throughout your project. to give it the feel of it snowing. So I switched to angles since Sugar Mae wants to help and lay on the pressing mat. So we're going to do the running stitch here. We're going to come up. By the chimney. You're going to go just kind of weave your needle in following the line that you kind of drew it if you drew it And don't be afraid to turn your project to make it easier to stitch. And now we're going to make a star right here in the center. So you're going to make a plus sign. And 
and then make a X on top of that. So I'm going to make mine a like a little flag to set on a table. My husband's going to make me a little stand. So now all that's left to do is to put fabric on the back so you don't see all your stitches. <clears throat> so you need to cut a piece of fabric, whether it be wool or cotton or whatever you want to use on your back for your back. And then we're going to blanket stitch. So what I like to do is bring my needle up on the inside. And we're going to wrap it around to the back and come back up. Then I'm going to come over just a little bit and bring my loop in, or my needle through the loop. So you're coming over through your thread to create a bridge across there. And you're going to do that the whole way around. So it secures it closed. If you want it to hang, be sure to put it like a hanger on the side. On the back side, or if you're going to use it as a just a table runner, a placemat, so I'm going to finish this up, and come back for the final, to show you the final piece. Well, I hope you enjoyed making this fun project with me. I know I sure did. Brought back a lot of memories of watching my granny granny quilt. Yes, I understand this ain't a quilt like she used to do, but doing everything by hand just brought back so many great memories. So comment below and let me know what your favorite part is. And would you do it by hand or would you do it by machine? I also want to thank the host, Buckeye, Lifestyle and Decor, and Terry with Robin's Nest for hosting this with me. And be sure to check out the playlist below to see all the other creators and what kind of gingerbread that they did for our Crazy About Gingerbread collaboration. Until then, happy quilting, my friends. <laughs>